I first started taking an interest in Northern Rock in 2003. This was a mortgage bank that was growing at something like twice the rate of its competitors. Mostly in the history of capitalism, when a business performs like that, it's because they are taking dangerous risks, which they are rather good at hiding for quite a long time. So I just made a comment in 2003 in a column saying I was a bit anxious about this bank. It was growing a bit too fast. Uh, and I think I used the expression when a, you know, a business looks too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. For years, uh, you know, I looked like a blithering idiot because uh, Northern Rock continued to grow faster than other mortgage banks. And its share price went up and up until August the 9th, 2007. And the reason August the 9th is important is because that was the moment that asset-backed bond markets simply shut down. Uh, it was impossible for banks and financial institutions to parcel up mortgages and sell them to other investors in the shape of bonds. And the reason that was a cataclysmic moment for the rich West is because banks had become so dependent uh, on these markets to raise money. Investors just decided because they couldn't tell the good from the bad, they weren't going to touch any of them. And so these markets shut down and that deprived banks of a source of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of pounds worth of funds. Now, because I'd identified Northern Rock as a risky bank many years earlier, I was acutely aware that one of the risks it was taking was it became far too dependent on these markets to raise the money that it needed to make loans. Banks obviously have to lend in a sensible and cautious and prudent way, but they also have to borrow in a sensible, prudent and cautious way. It can go bust because the people it's lent to, or the institutions it lends to, the, co the companies that it lends to, can't pay back. It can simply lose the confidence of creditors and not borrow. And if, if a bank can't borrow, it can't repay all of us what we have deposited with them, because, of course, when we deposit money in a bank, they lend it out. It isn't sitting there. So if a bank can't borrow more money, and we ask for our money back, it's bust. So on August the 9th, markets closed down. And at that point, uh, I knew Northern Rock because it was more dependent than other British banks. All British banks were in some way using these markets. And other British banks were pretty dependent. But Northern Rock was the most extreme case of a big bank being dependent on these bond markets. And so I knew on August the 9th that it had a problem. And, you know, I was aware that if those markets didn't reopen, Northern Rock would either collapse or it would be bailed out by the Bank of England. Um, I was persuaded the Bank of England would not let it collapse. You made a point, I remember, of saying that you didn't think that the positives needed to be worried. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, now, you, you have subsequently been accused of actually causing the run. So I'm just interested as to whether you had a moment of, you know, as a journalist, did, did, you, did you have a sort of process of, mm, you know, is there a public interest dilemma here between me doing my job as a journalist and me perhaps keeping quiet? All my effort that night was, in, was devoted towards presenting the information as clearly and as dispassionately and as unsensationally as I could. And the words that I used, by the way, I didn't think there was a reason for depositors to fear that they would lose their money. I did not believe that the bank's loans, as they were currently constituted, were significantly bad. Um, and I actually said something else, which is that with the Bank of England stepping in, that was a sign of the authorities' confidence that they could keep this thing going. So there were a number of things that I'm afraid I wasn't aware of that meant that Northern Rock was more vulnerable to a run. 
than many other banks. I was inundated with complaints that I had destroyed the bank, it was all my fault. You know, I had a whole autumn because also the thing is I've been banging on about this, these markets closing down for some considerable time and why this was going to make us all poorer. So I, the entire autumn, I was just got a barrage of abuse from almost, it felt like everybody in the country saying that I was destroying the British economy, um, single-handed. We should be under no illusion that it was not those depositors that did for the bank. What did for the bank were the other banks and institutions who had already withdrawn money. The, the run started before my broadcast, right? The reason they went to the Bank of England for cap in hand was because the clever people who were in the know about what was happening at Northern Rock had taken their money out. It's another reason why I have never had a moment's doubt that the British people had a right to know what was going on. Because, you know, it is, it is the opposite of what a democracy should be about, that the people who happen to be in the city know about the risks and the rest, and the ordinary customers didn't know. So obviously it was in the interests of the millions of people who saved with Northern Rock to know what was going on. And ultimately they're taking their money out, they took out a few billion, right? The institutions and the other banks took out something like £50 billion from Northern Rock. It was the institutions that killed Northern Rock. It was not the savers.